I will start this video by introducing a simple yet largely misunderstood term. Mergers and acquisitions are two of the most misunderstood words in the business world. Both terms often refer to the joining of two companies. But there are key differences involved in when to use them. A merger is the voluntary combination of two companies into one new legal entity. The merged entity usually takes on a new name, ownership, and management that is composed of employees from both companies. Hence company A plus company B equals company C. The decision to merge is always mutual since the merging companies combine their forces to seek certain benefits. Even at the cost of diluting their individual powers, there is usually no exchange of cash. In terms of relative size of firms, the firms are typically similar in size. For this reason, the term merger of equals is sometimes used. Anheuser-Busch InBev is an example of how mergers work and unite companies together. The company is the result of multiple mergers, consolidation, and market extensions in the beer market. The newly named company, Anheuser-Busch InBev, is the result of the mergers of three large international beverage companies, which are Anheuser-Busch from the United States, Interbrew from Belgium, and Amber from Brazil. In practice, friendly mergers of equals do not take place very frequently. It's uncommon that two companies would benefit from combining forces with two different CEOs. And it is hard for the CEOs to agree to give up some authority to realize those benefits. High value. Mergers among global or domestic business corporations have always attracted attention and generated case studies. As they have interesting implications for business development. So, let's go through a case study of one of the largest merger in history. Which is between American Online, AOL, and Time Warner. The largest merger in history took place in 2000 when AOL merged with Time Warner Inc. in a transaction worth a stunning 360 billion. During that time, AOL was the largest internet provider in the US, with huge market share across the American households. To capitalize on its success, AOL decided to merge with Time Warner, an entertainment and mass media conglomerate. The idea was that the new entity, AOL Time Warner, would become an influential force in the publishing news, music, cable, entertainment, and internet. After the merger, AOL became the largest tech company in America. But, the combination lasted less than a decade. As the dot-com bubble burst, it was clear that the merger failed to materialize. Eventually, AOL and Time Warner spun off to operate as independent companies. In an acquisition, a new company does not emerge. Instead, the smaller company is often consumed and ceases to exist with its assets becoming part of the larger company. Hence, company A plus company B still equals to company A. Acquisitions happen when one company completely takes over the operations of another. The acquirer must purchase at least 51% of the target company's stock in order to gain absolute control over it. Unlike a merger, the decision of acquisition might not be mutual in case the acquiring company takes over another enterprise without the latter's consent. It is termed as a hostile takeover. It usually occurs between two companies that are not equal in stature, where a financially stronger entity generally acquires a smaller relatively weaker one. The smaller company continues its operations under the name of the larger one. The acquirer can choose to either retain or lay off the staff of the acquired company. In fact, the acquired company ceases to exist in its previous name and operates under the name of the acquiring company. Only in some cases does the acquired company gets to retain its original name. Real-world example of acquisitions include Amazon acquiring Whole Foods for 13 billion in 2017. We mostly hear about acquisitions of large well-known companies because these huge and significant deals tend to dominate the news. In reality, mergers and acquisitions occur more regularly between small to medium-sized firms than between large companies. Let's go through a case study of one of the largest acquisitions in history, which is Vodafone acquiring Manusman AG in 1999 one of the ugliest takeovers in history which lasted over three months in Europe. British mobile network operator Vodafone launched a hostile takeover of German wireless company Manusman AG, which was rebuffed. Manusman was so opposed to the move that they even started conversations with Vivendi, who they saw as a white knight, stepping in to save them from the hostile bid. Vodafone ultimately increased their offer and got their offer accepted. During that time, the deal was worth 203 billion, which was then a record. Adjusting for inflation, that's now a stunning 287 billion, making the takeover the largest acquisition deal in history. As the mobile market increased momentum internationally and growth was at its peak, the landmark acquisition was expected to change the international telecommunications landscape. However, the deal was a failure and Vodafone was forced to write off billions of dollars in the later years.